Blending is a process that every miniature painter will come across if they are not using strictly old base, shade and highlight approach. In this video you will learn about the main blending methods so you yourself can get those smooth transitions and gradients on your miniatures. Which one is the easy method? Which one is the fastest? And which one is the single best method to blend on your miniatures? Let's find out. Also, I can see that just a fraction of my viewers are subscribed, so go ahead and subscribe, it's free, and you can always change your mind and unsubscribe later if you want. Now I'm just gonna talk about painting with acrylic paints, and the main feature, or disadvantage depending on how you look at it, is their quick drying time. However, if you are painting with oil paints, this drying process can take days or even more. And also, if you do use them, I only wish to be just as brave as you are. Wait, this doesn't taste like acrylic. Anyway, since drying time is just as fast as water evaporates, we have to treat painting with acrylics accordingly. Wet blending. First, we are gonna look at a technique that is the most similar to painting with oils, and that is wet blending. To demonstrate this technique, look at what I am doing on my wet palette. I am taking two different colors and mixing them together, essentially creating multiple mid-tones. Now you wanna do exactly this on your miniature. You can see that in this spot right here, I have painted three layers before I started. You could do this with two or five, it does not really matter. But the more layers and more mid-tones you have here, the easier the blending between them is. Now I will try to mix these two layers together, so first apply the colors that you are planning to mix. I am once more taking this highlight color and this mid-tone, and I am painting them right next to each other. Your paint should be thick enough, so it can be potentially used as a base layer. If it's thicker, it can get a little bit messy, and if it's too thin, you will not be able to mix the paint properly. While the paint is still wet and not drying, something you will always have to look out for, you want to make a zigzag motion across the separation. You could potentially make another motion, for example vertical brush strokes along the separation, but you have to make sure that no brush strokes are actually visible. Otherwise, the result will not be that smooth. If the surface is not blended perfectly, or if you feel like one paint overwhelmed the other, you can simply add the other paint while everything is still wet. But let me repeat myself here. Make sure that the paint is not drying up. If it is, definitely wait for it to fully dry, so you don't rub it off and create texture. Unless that's what you want. This technique allows you to come back and do it again if you are not satisfied with your blend. As long as you don't drown the miniature in paint or create texture. Blending like this will take you seconds, so it might serve you as a great foundation for further improvements. For example, you can get something like this and push it further by applying glazes over areas that you want. Even if you will have to come back to thin layering or glazing, it will take you way less layers and way less time. Stippling. Stippling is just as easy as it sounds. You simply take paint and stipple it on the surface. I would say that this method is a variation of a very controlled dry brushing or even over brushing as some people call it because these have many things in common. For one, you don't want too much water in your paint. Two, you don't need to mix the paint on the miniature or apply thin coats and also the motion is really similar. So let's look at this brown armor. Once it is base coated, I will progressively stipple on lighter and lighter layers, covering less and less surface the lighter I go. Since each individual stipple will not cover the stippled area to the full extent, some of the color that is underneath will be visible. That way, if you progress slow enough, adding more and more layers will create quite nice gradient. Note that if you use too thick of a paint, you might create texture on the miniature which can be a good thing for something old and damaged, but bad news for something super shiny and smooth. However, even so, if you progress slowly and patiently, you can get a result that is still very smooth. Whether you call it stippling or controlled dry brushing or even over brushing, definitely don't use your best brushes since it can really damage them. Using something durable and synthetic would be much better. Layering and glazing. Layering and glazing are probably the most used blending techniques out there. This is not only due to the fact that it is not that difficult to put down some layers of thinned down paint, which is essentially what a glaze is, but also because this approach is fairly universal. This approach is especially useful when painting shiny non-metallic metal because it allows you to blend precisely. I always like to put down multiple layers of mid-tones next to each other and then take one of these mid-tones and glaze over the transitions. It will take you multiple coats of glazing, but in the end, result should be really smooth. When applying glazes, you will be essentially moving water with a little bit of pigment and you always want to move this pigment towards a place that you want to smoothen out. As was the case when wet blending, once you see that the paint is starting to dry, do not touch it. 
Otherwise, you will rub some of the paint off and create rough texture. While this technique can be quite precise, placing right glaze in the right place and doing it over and over again can be quite time consuming. So I wouldn't really say that glazing is the fastest, but perhaps the most precise. If you want very nice blends in a really short amount of time, your best bet is wet blending. But even so, I would recommend starting with few layers of midtones, then proceed with wet blending and finish up with glazing for the smoothest result. Stippling can be also very quick and smooth, but you have to play around with thickness of the paint depending on what result are you looking for. In the end, it is always a good idea to be able to use all of them and combine them as you need. I will be definitely covering all of these techniques in the future, so go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell so you will know when the time has come. Also, let me know down in the comment section which of these techniques should I cover next. Lastly, if you want to help others get better at painting miniatures, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, so that way YouTube will know that it should take this video and recommend it to them. And see you in the next one. Bye!